ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर श्री ई अहमद जी ऑल द डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डायस ऑल द इनवाइटेड गेस्ट द प्रेस वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल एनी सच education summit i believe should come out with a set of observations at the end of the summit so that the policy directives can be better managed and i hope this summit as well would do that there are some very eminent speakers very eminent dignitaries who have come here and i hope the summit would be so much i mean the, the summit would gain so much from their expertise <coughs> we have in india a very large education system because we have large numbers in india anything that we talk about revolves around numbers and the kind of numbers that we have provides great opportunities but also provides great challenges and if we do not address those challenges the advantages that we perceive in this country would also be put to disadvantage <clears throat> for example we have at the higher education level and more so in technical education we have almost 3 million students entering the system Two mil, more than two million students at the undergraduate, postgraduate level, and almost one million students at the polytechnic level entering every year into the system. And this number is by any means very, very large, and therefore it has its own share of problems and challenges. in as much as providing for the aspirations of the children in our country we also need to provide for access to everybody whoever needs higher education that itself is a challenge and while doing so we also need to provide quality education be it higher technical or whatever and quality imposes great restrictions on the systems that we conduct while dwelling on quality we need to look at what kind of teaching learning happens in our institutions we need to look at what kind of faculty are employed to do to deliver that purpose and what are the initiatives that are required from all these stakeholders from all these stakeholders in this uh, <clears throat> promotion of education in the country and deliverance of education in this country by stakeholders i mean students so we need to create student centric systems we need faculty which is a very important factor we also need good infrastructure and we need a lot of research and innovation going into that system so that the finer details can be addressed in the teaching learning process while we talk about quality of teachers we have a positive of teachers to address first 
We do not have the kind of numbers that we require. In the technical education space alone, you re we require about 6 lakh teachers, and we have about 4.5 lakh teachers. So there, the numbers itself is an issue. Once you look at the numbers we have, then the next that we have to address is the quality. What kind of uh, qualifications they possess, not merely the qualifications, what kind of delivery they can make, what kind of value addition they can make within the class. So that it needs to be addressed. And a lot of things have been said about research, innovation, and so on in various forums. Research is something uh, that needs to be practiced like we practice our religion, be fanatical about research, promoting research, be passionate, and so on. And that needs a lot of funding to come in from the public sector, the private sector, the government, and so on. Merely saying that I would set up a research institute does not make it necessarily a research institute. It takes a lot of time, a lot of inputs, maybe 30, 40 years to get it a good research institute. But looking at the kind of numbers that we have, we need to make a policy decision somewhere and realize that all our institutions, no matter what way they are run, can become research or quality institutions overnight. And not all of them will ever become research institutions. So we need to figure out what the institutions that also do, research institutions that also do teaching, and teaching institutions that also do research and promote the culture within those institutions which have the necessary wherewithal to become good teaching institutions and good research institutions. There is a lot of talk about finishing schools and the kind of uh, uh, quality deficit that we have within our students' capabilities when they pass out and something needs to be said there. There are se several uh, studies, the NASCOM has produced studies, the various organizations have uh, given various research reports which say that the employability is pretty low, about 25%, 30% and so on. We need to re revisit all those figures and also look at the assumptions that they have made while computing those figures. It's not that people are remaining vacant, uh, uh, the people are not employable. It's more to do with what kind of employment they get. If I'm producing, let's say, one, one million graduates every year from the two million that, I, that enter the system, if I assume that 25% of them are employable and almost seven, uh, 7.5 lakh people remaining unemployment, um, unemployed every year, what it really means is you have a civil problem at hand. You cumulatively, you see over a period of five years how many people you have unemployed and so on. So that's not the case. The, all the people who pass out are employed, probably not at the level at which they expect to be employed, but they do get employed. And we need to revisit that for the simple fact that we need to provide appropriate employment opportunities. The next in the uh, study of higher education would be necessarily the huge dropouts that are happening in this country. First of all, if you look at a few figures, we will understand what exactly is happening. In the 2008-9 figures, we had about 20 million people entering, 217 lakhs entering the 10th stream and about 109 lakhs passing 10th, which means about 50% have failed. At the 12th level, we had 157 lakhs appearing and 79 lakhs passing 12th, which means another 50% dropped out there. So almost 20 million students pass and about 20 million students fail. Many of those students may probably coming back into the system over a period of time 
and they must be getting on to do higher education. But that's not the point. The point is what happens to these people who are dropping out and why is such a large number happening. On one side we talk about a GER which is as low as 17, 18. Compared to US you have about 65, 70% of GER and here we have a very low GER. Hypothetically if I assume all the students passing out all the students appearing at 10th and 12th passing out, 10th, 11th, 12th, we will find out suddenly that we do not have enough number of colleges to accommodate all of them. So on one side, we are saying that our GER is low. On the other side, we peg our passing rates at 50% and then we create a sub-optimal situation and we are fine with it. So we need to have a massive input in the higher education system. We need to create more opportunities. Maybe the students who are dropping out are dropping out because of financial constraints. They have to support their families or because they are just bored about the current education system that we have. Either way, you need a different paradigm and the new paradigm that we need to push hard and push at this point of time is the skill building. So therefore, we from our side we also have a vocational board, an All India vocational board, and through that we have created a vocational, national vocational education qualification framework where we build the skills and the higher education together and provide multiple mm -hmm. pathways to achieving a diploma or a degree in vocational education. The reason is very simple. We have several ITIs which provide skills, but we as a society wouldn't want our children to go to an ITI and become a good welder, a good plumber, become employable and so on. That, that's the way our society is built today. And on the other side, merely getting a de degree or a diploma doesn't guarantee a job and therefore both ends there is a mismatch. So you need to create a new paradigm in this country where skills are built into education, both come together and you create multiple opportunities to get from vocational education back into formal education off of formal into vocational and so on, or drop out at any level, get into a job market, get some uh, useful experience, come back into the system and so on. So this model needs to be uh, adopted by all the states. We have gone to several states for workshops and so on. There has been good uh, response, but we need the entire society to back such initiatives and see that the potential in this country is harnessed to the maximum. The other point in the same uh, area is the concept of community colleges. Not in the national vocational framework, eighth pass is a must. Therefore, the first certificate starts at ninth. However, we also have several people who drop out before ninth and that number also is huge and therefore we need to accommodate them in something called as a community college concept. So you again build skills, along with skills you also build communication skills, the hands-on skills plus communication skills, grooming skills, entrepreneurial skills, build in certain foreign language concepts, the computing skills, basic computing skills and basic accounting, bookkeeping skills and you have a good program at the community college level where you don't have to do the hard learning, the science, arts and so on build on your skills, add to that a little bit of your communication and grooming skills and be become self-employed or be usefully or meaningfully employed. Anybody can get into this kind of system. Not necessary that an eighth, pa eighth pass or a fifth grader or fourth grader, anybody can come into such a system. And there we have provided for five levels of certification and a competency skill diploma would be aw awarded by the technical boards in that space. So therefore we, we need to come out with models which are useful to this country, aligned towards the requirements of what we have in this country. Look at the numbers and you need a good skill provider, a trainer concept to be built in this country to provide hands-on skills at, in various sectors. All vocational education is skills sector specific, sector specific and therefore we need to create the trainers 
within that space and train the trainer's concept would follow subsequently over a period of time. So therefore, I have suggested certain uh, issues, sorry, flagged certain issues for your reference. We have a huge system. There is no, uh, no second thoughts about that. <clears throat> but we also need to tell our students, our children, that merely possessing one expertise, merely become, having a graduation in commerce or arts or science or engineering is not sufficient, is not enough in today's world to succeed. You need to have at least two expertise areas and that's what we need to build through value addition, be it in our schools, be it in our colleges or whatever. For example, it, uh, what I'm suggesting is not bachelor of science with uh, another bachelor's degree. What, what we need to promote is, along with bachelors of science or commerce or whatever, you also need to build other skills which will help him. Like for example, he could be good in music, he could be good in art, painting, photography, whatever. So therefore, along with our conventional, conventional education, we need to build additional skills for them to become more productive and be productive over a life span that they would probably have. So these are my suggestions and thank, uh, I thank all the audience, the organizers and uh, all the distinguished guests for, me, for giving me an opportunity and would be there for whatever clarifications are required. Thank you.